Good morning, everyone. Well, good afternoon right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a follow-up video to the one I did earlier. And also, um, there may be another one. There may be one or two more after this because this subject is it's a lot of information. I'm trying to can, um, can, can find it down. So anyway, um, the title of the earlier message was we wanted a, a king over us and came from Samuel 1, 1 Samuel um, 1 verse 8. And so um, we're, in order to go there and in order to discuss that, we, now we have to go back. So I'm going to start at Genesis um, because I told you all that Rome is Edom. And so, um, but the Bible says that Edom hides himself. And so although he's, he's a small Gentile nation, but he is a camouflage, he hides himself in other people groups so that he won't be identified. And then we know like right now today, there is no, uh, <laughs> everything is just black or white. We totally for, we've totally forgotten about, you know, Hamites, uh, Amalekites, and all the other ites that were, you know, we don't even know where the lost tribes were. No one exists anymore. There's just black and white. And so, all right. So I'm going to start here at Genesis 25 and read verses uh, 20 through 20 through 30. And then um, want to jump to Genesis 27. All right. So it says here, starting at the 20th verse, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated Ahiah for, for his wife because she was barren. And Ahiah was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Ahiah. And, the, and Ahiah said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of peoples shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger. So remember, remember, because we're going to go back to this verse, verse 23, where it says, you know, God himself prophesied and said, the elder shall serve the younger. So verse 24, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, just like Ahia had spoken. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came, came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared them, so that means Isaac was 60 years old. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. All right, so this is another thing to, to realize. The Bible is telling us how to identify the descendants of Jacob and the descendants of Esau. Jacob was a plain man, living out the land and dwelling in tents. Esau was a cunning hunter. He was a man of war. He was a man of the field. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his venison and Rebekah loved Jacob. So, and then also here, we're gonna, um, like I said, we're going to go to the 30th verse and Jacob and Jacob saw pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee with, with that some red pottage for I am faint. Therefore, his name was called Edom. So his, um, his name was called Edom, which means red. Um, 
but we're going to go up we're going to go back up to the two sons being born. Matter of fact, hold on. Should I go down? No. So, no, we're going to go verse, back up to verse 25 where it says that the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So mind you, there is no description of Jacob because Jacob came out looking like his father's people he came out looking like abraham like shem you know like um he came out looking like his people all right um so there was no description needed but it says that esau he came out red all over and like a hairy garment then um, there are some translation like this says here that there was some red pottage, like red lentils. But if you really research this, it was saying that Jacob was actually cooking some a pot of like stew and the meat that was in it was still red. It was still bloody and um, it wasn't even done. But J um, Esau wanted, you know, he wanted some. And so, um, all right. So now I'm going to go to 27, Genesis 27, and skip around here. I'm going to go to the 16th verse. Because now we're still trying to identify um, who Esau is. So this is when the mother... Well, es um, Esau was about to get the, the blessing because in the previous passage, he sold his birthright to his brother for that pot of bloody red uh, stew. But then um, he wanted the blessing. So when his mother, Rebecca, heard that um, the father was going to bless Esau, you know, while he was out, you know, they, they, they devised a plan to deceive him. So I started at verse 15 here. It says, and Rebecca took goodly raiment of her eldest son, Esau, which were in her house. And she put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of kids of goats upon his hand and upon the smooth of his neck. So um, this is what Jacob Jacob put the smooth of his neck now. It didn't say his chest. It said the smooth of his neck. So this is how hairy Esau was and, and his hands. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment and see if I can um, pull up. Here we go. See if I can pull up. Um, a few images here. So Esau had hairy hands hairy like hairy knuckles because his father actually called him over and um rubbed on his hands all right and then um so i'm going to stop sharing for a second and also so he had we're going to look at now we know that the messiah himself was described as herring, having hair of lambs or sheep's wool. The father himself was described sitting on his throne with woolly hair. And, um, and throughout the Bible, that's how Adam and the descendants are described. So, I'm just going to show this next picture here. We're going to let the Bible. So 
So he was described as a hairy man, um, red, like red all over, hairy neck, hairy arms, hairy, you know. And but also the difference was he was described as what they had to take goat's hair. They didn't, they didn't take um. They didn't go take hair from a sheep. They took goat's hair to pull it off. So we look at, this is the hair from a lamb or a sheep. And this is the hair of a goat. So they had to go out, take a kid, take the hair of the goats and put on Jacob, on his neck and chest and on his hands so that he could deceive his father. All right, so now let me go back to um, the East Ward. So also there's a word called a troglodyte. And this, the definition for this is a person that dwell in caves. Um, a person that dwelled in caves and they're out like, like a caveman. Um, a beast, a wild or brute man. So we're going to go into that as well. Let me just show you that quickly. And then um, this is the definition of a troglodyte. And this is what Esau is actually described as, a person who dwells in caves and so um or or cave a caveman pretty much so let's go back here all right i kind of missed it up y'all So <clears throat> 27 and 16 and 23, we see that he has to be, the father has to be deceived. He, he, he didn't discern it because when he rubbed Jacob's hands, Jacob's hands were hairy as his brother Esau. So he gave his son the blessing. So now i um, going to go down to 37. I have written down here. What did I see in 37? Oh, okay. So Isaac gave his... Um, gave his son the blessing. He, he gave Jacob the blessing. So when Esau came in, um, you know, he cried and he said, is that the only blessing you have? And so now he tell Isaac, blessed him and says in 39 and 40, behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of, and the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword thou shalt live and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shall have the dominion, when you shall have the dominion, because you, you're going to serve your brother, but it shall come to pass that when you shall have the dominion, that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. So we see here that um, the father actually had given... Um, he actually tells us here, or he tells Esau what type of man he would be. And basically he's gonna be a man of war. He's going to be a, a man that lives off the fatness of the earth. He's gonna be a hunter. He's going to be mighty, but he's going to be the lesser. And, but there will come a time that he shall have the dominion. It shall come to pass that you shall have the dominion. 
So he has broken the yoke from off his neck. And then if we um go here, because I, yeah, I think in that next verse, that's when it said Esau hated his brother Jacob because of the blessing. And he said in his heart that, you know, basically after my father dies, I'm just going to slay him. So now we're going to go to Deuteronomy 2 and 5. Deuteronomy 2, verse 5. This is when the children of Israel were, were being, um, were leaving Egypt during the Exodus. So they started the fourth verse and command thou the people saying, ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir. And they shall be afraid of you. Take ye, take ye good heed to yourself, therefore, meddle not with them, because I will not give you their land. No, not so much as a footbreath, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau for a possession. So Esau and his children went to dwell in the Caucasus Mountains. They went to dwell in Mount Seir. The Most High gave them that for a possession. All right, and he says it there. Now we're going to go down to the 12th verse. And it says, the Horums also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them when they had destroyed them from before, before them and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did into the land of his possession, which the Lord had given him or which Ahiah had given him. So basically the Horums, which were really like what we would call Neanderthals or cavemen that dwelt in Mount Seir prior to Esau, uh, coming into Mount Seir and taking over and basically slaughtering, it was slaughtering, it was Esau's, um, it was Zepho, Esau's son Zepho, when he became king, because Esau went to, went to that area and they started ruling, they set up cities, they became kings, and his um, children warred with the Horums and slaughtered majority of the men, but left the women and children alive. And Esau started mixing with the Horums, the um, people of that land. So now I'm going to go to First Chronicles 43. First Chronicles 1 and the 43rd verse. Now, these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Denheba. All right, so pay attention to why is it saying these are the kings that reigned in Edom before any king reign over the children of Israel because this is talking about the Gentile kings we know that the most high himself was the king of Israel he was the king of all the 12 um the 12 sons of Judah I mean of Israel and we did not have an earthly king over us but this these verses, there are certain verses that's giving us emphasis on Gentile kings reigning over the children of Israel. So First Chronicles 1 and 43 brings um, that to light. And then we're going to go to Second Chronicles verse 20. And I, I, have, I highlighted verses 10 and 11. Okay, so it says, And behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou was not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, they have turned from them and destroyed them not. 
but they turned from them and destroyed them not. So basically, the children of Ammon, the children of Moab and Mount Seir, the um, Esau's children, had gathered together and they were coming to war against the children of Israel. So Israel is praying to Ahia and they're pleading saying, you told us not to mess with them, not to destroy them when we came out of the land of Egypt and we didn't. But behold, I say, look at how they were, they're rewarding us to come and to cast us out of our possession, which you have given us to inherit. So they're saying, you giving us our land, you gave them their land. When we passed through Mount Seir, we didn't mess with them. Now they're on the way to war with us and cast us out of our possession that you gave us. And so if you go further, you'll see that, that God told them, don't worry about it. You won't even have to fight. I'm going to fight for you. So um, this there was another verse. There was another verse that I also had um, written down about. It highlighted again the children of Edom or the kings reigning over Israel. So the um, this is very important to build up to show us who these people are that are hiding out and they have changed their names and that are just calling things black or white. But you, we're going to see how these people have basically since the beginning been attempting to colonize the world. And, um, and the Bible says Esau is the end of the world and Jacob the beginning. So that's, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video so it won't be too long, but then I'll make one more um, and we'll discuss further the building of these cities. All right, you all have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video.